Charles's law, also known as the law of volumes, is an experimental gas law that describes how gases tend to expand when heated. A modern statement of Charles's law is when the pressure on a sample of a dry gas is held constant, the Kelvin temperature and the volume will be in direct proportion. This relationship of direct proportion can be written as V T display style V propto T. So this means V T equals K O R V equals K T display style frac V T equals K quad or quad V equals K T where V is the volume of the gas T is the temperature of the gas measured in kelvins and K is a non-zero constant this law describes how a gas expands as the temperature increases. Conversely, a decrease in temperature will lead to a decrease in volume. For comparing the same substance under two different sets of conditions, the law can be written as V one T one equals V two T two or v 2 v 1 equals t 2 t 1 or v 1 t 2 equals v 2 T one Display style frac V underscore one T underscore one equals frac V underscore two T underscore two Q quad text or Q quad frac V underscore two V underscore one equals frac T underscore two T underscore one Q quad text or Q quad V underscore one T underscore two equals V underscore two T underscore one the equation shows that, as absolute temperature increases, the volume of the gas also increases in proportion. <laughs> Discovery and naming of the law The law was named after scientist Jacques Charles, who formulated the original law in his unpublished work from the 1780s. In two of a series of four essays presented between 2 and 30 October 1801, John Dalton demonstrated by experiment that all the gases and vapors that he studied expanded by the same amount between two fixed points of temperature. The French natural philosopher Joseph Louis Gay Lussac confirmed the discovery in a presentation to the French National Institute on 31 January 1802, although he credited the discovery to unpublished work from the 1780s by Jacques Charles. The basic principles had already been described by Guillaume Amontons and Francis Hawkesby a century earlier. Dalton was the first to demonstrate that the law applied generally to all gases, and to the vapors of volatile liquids if the temperature was well above the boiling point. Gay-Lussac concurred. With measurements only at the two thermometric fixed points of water, Gay-Lussac was unable to show that the equation relating volume to temperature was a linear function. On mathematical grounds alone, Gay-Lussac's paper does not permit the assignment of any law stating the linear relation. Both Dalton's and Gay Lussac's main conclusions can be expressed mathematically as V one hundred minus V zero equals K V zero Display style V underscore one hundred V underscore zero equals K V underscore zero 
where V100 is the volume occupied by a given sample of gas at 100 degrees Celsius, V0 is the volume occupied by the same sample of gas at 0 degrees Celsius, and K is a constant which is the same for all gases at constant pressure. This equation does not contain the temperature and so has nothing to do with what became known as Charles's law. Gay-Lussac's value for K was identical to Dalton's earlier value for vapors and remarkably close to the present-day value of 1/2.7315. Gay-Lussac gave credit for this equation to unpublished statements by his fellow Republican citizen J. Charles in 1787. In the absence of a firm record, the gas law relating volume to temperature cannot be named after Charles. Dalton's measurements had much more scope regarding temperature than Gay-Lussac, not only measuring the volume at the fixed points of water, but also at two intermediate points. Unaware of the inaccuracies of mercury thermometers at the time, which were divided into equal portions between the fixed points, Dalton, after concluding in SA2 that in the case of vapors, any elastic fluid expands nearly in a uniform manner into 1370 or 1380 parts by 180 degrees Fahrenheit of heat, was unable to confirm it for gases. Relation to absolute zero Charles's law appears to imply that the volume of a gas will descend to zero at a certain temperature minus 266.66 degrees Celsius according to Gay-Lussac's figures or minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. Gay-Lussac was clear in his description that the law was not applicable at low temperatures, but I may mention that this last conclusion cannot be true except so long as the compressed vapors remain entirely in the elastic state, and this requires that their temperature shall be sufficiently elevated to enable them to resist the pressure which tends to make them assume the liquid state. At absolute zero temperature the gas possesses zero energy and hence the molecules restrict motion. Gay-Lussac had no experience of liquid air first prepared in 1877, although he appears to have believed as did Dalton that the «permanent gases» such as air and hydrogen could be liquefied. Gay-Lussac had also worked with the vapors of volatile liquids in demonstrating Charles's law, and was aware that the law does not apply just above the boiling point of the liquid. I may however remark that when the temperature of the ether is only a little above its boiling point, its condensation is a little more rapid than that of atmospheric air. This fact is related to a phenomenon which is exhibited by a great many bodies when passing from the liquid to the solid state, but which is no longer sensible at temperatures a few degrees above that at which the transition occurs. The first mention of a temperature at which the volume of a gas might descend to zero was by William Thomson later known as Lord Kelvin in 1848. This is what we might anticipate, when we reflect that infinite cold must correspond to a finite number of degrees of the air thermometer below zero, since if we push the strict principle of graduation, stated above, sufficiently far, we should arrive at a point corresponding to the volume of air being reduced to nothing, which would be marked as minus 273 degrees of the scale minus 100, 0.366, if 0.366 be the coefficient of expansion, and therefore minus 273 degrees of the air thermometer is a point which cannot be reached at any finite temperature, however low. However, the «absolute zero on the Kelvin temperature scale was originally defined in terms of the second law of thermodynamics, which Thomson himself described in 1852. Thomson did not assume that this was equal to the zero volume point» of Charles's law, merely that Charles's law provided the minimum temperature which could be attained. The two can be shown to be equivalent by Ludwig Boltzmann's statistical view of entropy 1870. However, Charles also stated, the volume of a fixed mass of dry gas increases or decreases by 1 273rd times the volume at 0 degrees Celsius for every 1 degree Celsius rise or fall in temperature. Thus, V T equals 
v 0 plus 1 273 times v 0 times t Display style v underscore t equals v underscore zero plus t f r a c one two hundred and seventy three times v underscore zero times t v t equals v zero one plus t two hundred and seventy three Display style v underscore t equals v underscore zero one plus t f r a c t two hundred and seventy three, where v t is the volume of gas at temperature t, v zero is the volume at zero degrees Celsius. Topic: Relation to kinetic theory. The kinetic theory of gases relates the macroscopic properties of gases, such as pressure and volume, to the microscopic properties of the molecules which make up the gas, particularly the mass and speed of the molecules. In order to derive Charles's law from kinetic theory, it is necessary to have a microscopic definition of temperature, this can be conveniently taken as the temperature being proportional to the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules, ek t E K display style T propto bar E underscore room K. Under this definition, the demonstration of Charles's law is almost trivial. The kinetic theory equivalent of the ideal gas law relates PV to the average kinetic energy P V equals two three n E K display style PV equals frac two three n bar E underscore room K. Topic. See also. Boyle's law, relationship between pressure and volume in a gas at constant temperature. Combined gas law. Gay-Lussac's law – relationship between pressure and temperature of a gas at constant volume. Avogadro's law – relationship between volume and number of moles of a gas at constant temperature and pressure. Ideal gas law – the equation of state of a hypothetical ideal gas Hand boiler Thermal expansion – the tendency of matter to change volume in response to a change in temperature.